from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Pratiksha and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will offer you a glimpse into India's culture, diversity and the developments happening in and around the world. The Indian Independence Day is not just about celebrating freedom and the nation's spirit, but also a time to proudly reflect on the country's achievements. The event also displays India's evolution from obscurity to becoming the world's fifth largest economy and advancing toward global leadership. Not too far back, India marked its 77th Independence Day on August 15 and showcased its rich cultural legacy while sharing tales of achievement. Join us as we see how Indians around the world, from the ramparts of Delhi's Red Fort to the USA and the Middle East, marked the 77th Independence Day with joy and unity, commemorating the journey from the past to a brighter future. The long-standing Article 370, which had hindered Jammu and Kashmir's development for decades, came to an end on 19th of August 2019 with the Indian Parliament's approval through an abrogation bill. This marked a historic moment for India. This long-deprived region started witnessing swift launching of several developmental projects. Smart City Programme, a transformative campaign to provide infrastructural facelift to urban centres around the country also found its way in Srinagar. The situation has turned massively since then with the government's consistence and it was bringing numerous opportunities to the youth. The Independence Day scenes were unprecedented this time around. The entire region of Kashmir broke out in song and dance and rejoiced in commemoration of the Independence Day at the historical Lal Chowk Clock Tower in Srinagar. <laughs> सच में मेरे को आज रोना आ रहा है आज हमारे हालात ठीक हो गए कश्मीर पहले रो रहा था 370 के बाद सब ठीक हो गए अब पूरे कल हम यहां पे एक बजे रात तक यहां पे थे तो बहुत अच्छा लगा कि यहां का युवा भी अब यही चाहता है कि अमन होना चाहिए और अमन इंशाल्लाह हो रहा हो गया अब इट इज हार्ड टू एक्सप्लोर द कल्चरली रिच ट्रेडिशंस एंड द यूनिकनेस ऑफ इंडिया इन वन गो However, the states during the Independence Day programs showcase their vibrant customs on the occasion of the celebration of India's freedom movement that culminated in the British being driven out of the country. People from all walks of life gathered to witness the enthusiastic groups who sang and danced to the beats of patriotic songs in fervor and gaiety. हम इस प्रोग्राम को अटेंड करने मुंबई से बड़े पैमाने पर ग्रुप को लेके आते हैं ये जो आप देख रहे हैं जो 110 लोग अभी साथ में आए तो पिछले 17 साल से हम लोग आ रहे हैं हमारे ईशा टूर्स कंपनी की तरफ से और हम बहुत बहुत खुशी महसूस होती है जब हम पोलो ग्राउंड में ये प्रोग्राम देख रहे हैं ahead in a unique moment of celebration people swarmed at the Atari Vaga border in Amritsar on the eve of Independence Day to witness the beating retreat ceremony. The beating retreat is an iconic ritual of lowering the national flags of both the countries, India and Pakistan, at the border just before sunset. The event followed the special parade of BSF soldiers and the electrifying performance of Bowles women featuring a 10-minute drill with the illustrious 303 rifles which weigh around 4.7 kg each. Josh, काफी बढ़िया है ऐसे चीजें हमें हमेशा देखने के लिए मिलता नहीं है और 15 अगस्त के इस अवसर पे लुकिंग एट द आर्मी लुकिंग एट द बीएसएफ और देशभक्ति को ऑल एट वंस देख के काफी अच्छा लगता है और मैं ऐसे उम्मीद करता हूं कि सारे भारतीय एक बार तो यहां पर वागा बॉर्डर का परेड देखिए जरूर देश में योगदान देना बहुत जरूरी है आई एम यहां रिप्रेजेंट करते हुए हमने अपनी परफॉर्मेंस दी है तो हम उसके थ्रू यही मैसेज देना चाहते हैं बाकियों को भी कि देश के लिए जितना हो सके उतना कंट्रीब्यूट करें और देश की ग्रोथ में सक्सेस में हेल्प करें 
the festivity of nationalism and brotherhood did not just limit to the boundaries of the country the day was also celebrated in other parts of the world with great zeal the indian diaspora took out parades and processions carrying flags and banners while singing patriotic songs on the streets of different countries Dubai's Burj Khalifa, the Middle East Abu Dhabi, the streets of London and the United States were all soaked in tricolor and filled with the emotions of love and brotherhood. The cultural food, vibrant colorful attire, folk dances and songs stirred a feeling of nationalism resonating deeply within the hearts of the people. Ye naya Bharat hai. ये आत्मविश्वास से भरा हुआ भारत है ये संकल्पों को चरितार करने के लिए जी जान से जुटा हुआ भारत है और इसलिए ये भारत न रुकता है ये भारत न थकता है ये भारत न हाफता है और न ही ये भारत हारता है Independence Day has a historical significance for India as the country celebrates the indomitable spirit of freedom fighters who made ultimate sacrifices during the struggle for India's freedom. It is also a moment to showcase the country's potential to the world and to contemplate and counter the challenges towards realizing its goal of attaining a 5 trillion dollar economy. The Holy Land of Ayodhya holds equal significance for Muslim as much as it does for Hindus when it comes to faiths and has been nourishing harmony and brotherhood among different communities in society for ages. The Mazar of Baba Hazrat Sayyid Shah Ibrahim Shah Rahmatullah Alai in Uttar Pradesh sets a unique example of the Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb where people regardless of their faiths bow their heads in togetherness. Let's take a look. Ayodhya, often considered a city of religious solidarity, has been a witness to the coexistence of Jainism, Buddhism, Shaivism, Vaishnavism and Sufism. It stands as a testament to a place where these diverse religions have harmoniously flourished together for centuries. In the heart of the city lies a number of Sufi shrines that have been drawing devotees and pilgrims from around the country for years. One among them is Baba Hazrat Sayyid Shah Ibrahim Shah Rahmatullah Alai. Situated at Swarg Dwar Adgada, the holy shrine is the living embodiment of the teachings of Sufism that have provided the devotees with spiritual guidance and enlightened the world with its idea of oneness. People rise above their identity of Hindu, Muslim, Sikh and Christian and come to the shrine and bow their heads in reverence and offer chadar in togetherness. Aap dekh sakte hain yahan par Ganga Jamuni Tehzeeb yahan ke log aur aaj ek Jumeirat wala din hai yahan par log ziyarat karne aate hain yahan ka baliyan hoti hain. यहाँ पर लंग, लंगर का वो एहतराम होता है और लोग अपने एहतराम के साथ उसको ग्रहण करते हैं ये एक दरगाह बहुत नामचीन दरगाह है यहाँ लोग अपने एक आपस में बड़ी मोहब्बत से मिलते हैं कभी ऐसा कोई इतफाक नहीं हुआ है अयोध्या के बीचों बीच में दरगाह कई दरगाहें हैं एक ये भी दरगाह है यहाँ पर हर तबके के लोग आते हैं हर मजहब के लोग आते हैं और अपनी श्रद्धा के पूर्व यहाँ पर जो है इबादत करते हैं दर्शन करते हैं कवालियाँ सुनते हैं चढ़ावा देते हैं लंगर खाते हैं यहाँ पर कभी ऐसी कोई बात नहीं हुई है यहाँ हमेशा अमन और चैन रहा The Dargah of the Saint is overwhelmed with flood of devotees on the occasion of Jumma night as devotees primarily from Ayodhya, Gonda Basti, Bahreich, Balrampur and other districts come here for ziyarat also called pilgrimage. During the auspicious night events like religious speeches and qawalis are performed to delight the devotees. Langar is another special feature of the Dargah. that fosters the bond between religious communities as people serve and share meals with a spirit of brotherhood 
The shrine is also a popular destination for meditation. The peaceful environment and calm ambience offer it a perfect space for meditation. Sare 800 saal ho gaya sarkar ko par dai. Yahan pe har kaum ka log aate hain. Yahan Hindu Muslim ka koi bhed bhav nahi hai. Bahut bade bade mahan pandit panda panditain sab log aate hain aur sarkar sab ki fariyaad sunte hain. For centuries, Sufis have used artistic expressions like prose, poetry and literature to teach the importance of compassion, understanding and peace. Their message is as relevant today as it ever was and it continues to inspire people from all over the world. And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Ola Electric, India's largest maker of electric scooters, launched its most affordable rides in an effort to woo more buyers as the price of e-scooters moves closer to gasoline models. These additions now claim the title of the most budget-friendly electric scooters in Ola Electric's existing range, positioned below the S1 Air model. The SoftBank Group Bag 9984T company also plans to launch four e-motorcycles by end 2024. The new e-scooter models S1X and S1X Plus will be priced at Rs 99,999 and Rs 109,999 respectively, with the cheapest variant of S1X about 36% lower than Bangalore-based Ola's most expensive e-scooter, the S1 Pro, which sells for Rs 140,000. The least expensive gasoline scooter in India costs about Rs 64,000. Gasoline two-wheelers account for the bulk of automobile sales in India and crossed 5 million units last fiscal, of which electric models made up around 15%, industry data showed. The government wants this to grow to 70% by 2030 and is offering incentives to boost sales. Tata Group unveiled a new logo, branding and plane livery for Air India as part of a multi-million dollar transformation of the former state-run carrier. The airline's new logo includes a design with golden, red and purple colors and will replace the old logo of a red swan with orange spokes. The rebranding by Tata, which comes after years of underinvestment under government control, will not completely do away with the iconic mascot of a cheerful Maharaja in a red turban and with an outsized moustache. Since taking control in 2022, Tata has spent millions of dollars to update Air India's old planes while also placing an order for hundreds of new jets. It has also upgraded many of its paper-based systems and streamlined operations to better compete with domestic rival Indigo and global airlines like Emirates. Over the past year, Air India has expanded its network and flights to several new domestic and international destinations but it still faces challenges in operating a seamless and timely schedule of flights. Thousands of devotees gathered in the coastal town of Rameshwaram in the southern India to perform rituals for the peace of their ancestors. Various rituals across India are performed at different times to seek the blessings of ancestors and for the well-being of their souls. For this ritual, devotees took a holy bath in the Agni Tirth beach and performed prayers for the souls of the ancestors who lived and passed away. Hindus believe that soul can escape the painful cycle of birth, rebirth and death if these sacred rituals are performed for ancestors. For centuries, Sufi shrines and tombs have been the most favorable destinations for communities of all religions to coexist together. 
द ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी दरगाह ऑफ हजरत रफ्यूदी शाह कादरी इन तेलंगाना हैदराबाद सिटी इज वन सच एग्जाम्पल ऑफ यू वेल्यूएबल टीचिंग ऑफ सूफी सेंट्स दैट हैव ऑलवेज प्रिजर्व द ट्रेजर टाइज बिटवीन हिंदूज मुस्लिम सिक्स एंड क्रिस्चियंस इन टैक्ट एंड कल्टिवेटेड ग्रोइंग फीलिंग्स ऑफ ब्रदरहुड अमंग दैम टेक अ ग्लैंस Hyderabad is a city where Sufism has flourished and soaked into the hearts of millions for centuries for its influence on the socio-political dynastic decisions and its relentless effort to propagate love and harmony among all communities. The Dargah of Sufi Saint Hazrat Rafiuddin Shah Qadri at one of the oldest suburbs Sheikh Pet in the Hyderabad district of Telangana is a glowing example of interfaith harmony and brotherhood. People from all walks of life come to pay their heartfelt tribute to the holy grave of the saint and seek his blessings. Recently, on the occasion of 433rd Urs, the Mazar of Baba witnessed a sea of devotees who, irrespective of their religious backgrounds, came and offered chadars at the shrine. मेरे बड़ों से जो है खिदमत होते आ रही है उसके बाद जो है हमको शर्फ हासिल हुआ है कर्म है संदल वगैरह भी जो है हमारे घर से जो है संदल होता है उसकी जिम्मेदारी भी वालिद के पास से हर जिम्मेदारी जो है हम जो है मैं निभा रहा हूँ सरकार का कर्म है खिदमत ले ले रहे हैं मैं यहाँ का खादिम हूँ और आपका मामला जो है सरकार का फिर आने पीर के पोतरे हैं ये सिजरा है सिजरे की फूलें सिजरा है आप जो पिरानी पीर के आल है पिरानी पीर सरकार सात पुत्रों को सबा खादरी जो वफे वफे के साथ जो भेजे हैं उनमें से हैं अब रफीउद्दीन सरकार उनमें से हैं और इस बार का का मैं खादिम हूँ और बड़ों से खिदमत होते आ रही है उसके बाद जो मेरे बाप दादा परदादा से होते आ रही उनके बाद जो है वालद के बाद मेरे को ये खिदमत करने का शर्फ हासिल हुआ है मैं खिदमत अंजाम दे रहा हूँ यहाँ पर हर मजहब के लोग आते हैं हिंदू मुसलमान कोई मजहब का सिख ईसाई कोई भी ऐसा नहीं है कि नहीं आते बोल के नहीं है Since the early 20th century the Sufi architecture has been an ideal place to pursue spiritualism. People often come to the shrine to find peace and tranquility escaping the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The holy shrine in Sheikh Pet is a sacred place where people come to worship, meditate and connect with their inner selves. Aapka silsila pirani pir sarkar ke जो है पोतरे हैं आप छिटी हुई पीढ़ी हैं और सबा खादरी के लिए पिरानी फिर सरकार जो है वक्फे वक्फे के साथ जो है भेजे हैं पहले आप आए खुद जो है शेख पेट की जो शेख मस्जिद जो बड़ी मस्जिद अब इस वक्त वीरान है उस मस्जिद में जो है मुकाम फरमाए थे आप इब्राहिम खली कुतुब शाह का दौर था तो जब चर्चे होने लगे कि आप जो है फैस आम हो रहा है चाहे कुछ दरवे चाहे बोले तो उन्होंने असद खां उनके वजीर असद खां को भेजे जाके मामला क्या है दरिया फी करो कौन है क्या है अगर कोई अच्छे से दरवेश है तो बारगा या महल में आने के लिए दावत नामा जो बोल के भेजे थे असद खां आए आके जो है आपसे मुलाकात करे उसके बाद जो है आप जाके बोले हैं कि बहुत बड़ा मामला है आने के लिए कहे तो कह दिए कि हम कहीं पर आते जाते नहीं बोल के बोल दिए उसके बाद जो है बादशाह सलामत आके आपसे मिले दरगाह एंड टूम्स ऑफ सूफी सेंट्स हैव बीन पॉपुलर पिलग्रमेज साइट्स फॉर बोथ हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स द टीचिंग्स ऑफ सूफिज्म हैज ऑलवेज अपहेल्ड यूनिटी एंड टुगेदरनेस अमंग द वेरियस कम्युनिटीज मैं चार साल से आता हूँ तीन चार साल से दरगाह को माशा बहुत फैज होता है यहाँ पे आए तो सुकून दिखता है सब मजहब के लोग आते हैं यहाँ पे हिंदू मुसलमान सिख ईसाई हर मजहब के लोग आते हैं यहाँ पे द ट्रेडिशन ऑफ सूफिज्म इज रिच एंड वाइब्रेंट एंड इट कंटिन्यूज टू वॉक फॉर पीपल अ मैसेज ऑफ होप एंड इंस्पिरेशन थ्रू इट्स लिटरेचर पोएट्री एंड म्यूजिक सूफिज्म रिमाइंड एवरीबडी दैट दे आर ऑल कनेक्टेड एंड दैट ह्यूमन्स हैव द पावर टू क्रिएट अ मोर लविंग एंड हारमोनियस वर्ल्ड 
And now we bring you some of these stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Raisin Ahmed Ali, a visually impaired Iraqi, has taken it upon herself to print Braille books for people like her who cannot afford to buy them. The 21-year-old Iraqi student says she and her peers struggle to find books in Braille in Iraq's Dohuk, which is what encouraged her in 2022 to buy a typewriter and use it to reprint books in Braille. With the help of her friends who make audiobook recordings, Ali types while listening to the recordings. She then shares her books with her peers whom she meets at libraries for reading groups. Indigenous people from all over Mexico descended to the capital to display their eye-catching folklore in a parade to mark the International Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples. Dancers flaunted colorful and extravagant costumes and danced in a parade in Mexico City that sought to raise awareness of the cultural diversity nesting in the country. Onlookers at Reforma Avenue enjoyed performances such as the Dance of the Devils, which originated from Mexico's south to symbolize the escape of African slaves from the Spanish. In Mexico, there are 23.2 million self-described indigenous people according to data from the country's Census Bureau from 2020. With car tires, rocks and mounds of sand as seats, Palestinians of all ages have been enjoying a trip to the movies at a rare big screen event on the Gaza beach front. The open air show with a playlist including the animated children's comedy Ferdinand was for many viewers a first experience of a projected film since the impoverished enclave's last cinema closed more than three decades ago. Hosted by C is Ours Cafe, the screenings were designed to promote issues of culture and history. The Gazans have been able to go to movie screenings which are held from time to time at theatres and other venues such as full bill of films being shown over several weeks at the venue is a rare treat. Boat races are among the grandest traditions still alive and thriving in Kerala. Vallamkali, also known as the Snake Boat Race, is an annual festival held in August and draws thousands of locals and foreign spectators who come to see the participants rowing long snake-shaped boats in the water body. Vallamkali includes races of many kinds of paddled long boats and snake boats. Let's have a look. Bordered by the Arabian Sea in the west, elevated western ghats in the east and networked by 44 interconnected rivers, Kerala, God's own country, is blessed with a unique collection of natural features that makes it one of the most sought after tourist destinations in Asia. The snake boat races are a major event in Kerala and is quite popular worldwide. These boat races in Kerala have always been a part of tradition and culture. There are instances in the history of Kerala when disputes between kings and chiefs were settled by boat races. The boat races are held in the backwaters of the state, elevating the charm of the water canals. The annual event is held in August and draws thousands of locals and foreign spectators who come to see the participants rowing long snake-shaped boats in the water bodies. Well, uh, we don't know much about the different boats, but we think it's really interesting to see it and the, um, the um, sportsmen are really giving their best, so it's great to see. We like it very much. Onam is the biggest and most important festival in Kerala. It is a harvest festival and is celebrated with joy and enthusiasm 
all over the state. The festival is celebrated between the months of August and September. The snake boat races are highly awaited events, further adding to the magnificence of Onam celebrations. Vallamkalli, the other name for snake boat race, is a traditional boat race in Kerala. These snake boats, or Vallamkalli, can be up to 100 feet long war canoes used in ancient era. Tens of thousands of people thronged India's southern Kerala state to watch these boat races. Yeah, I am coming to see the, the race boat. Uh, I'm so excited because I really like traditional uh, things. So I hope it's going to be a good race. And I'm really happy that you are keeping this tradition. Uh, I really like it. Uh, looks like you have to be really strong to do this uh, practice. A long shore lined with serene beaches, tranquil stretches of emerald backwaters, lush hill stations and exotic wildlife are just a few of the wonders that await the tourists once they cross over to the other side. Kerala is one of India's most progressive states in terms of social welfare and quality of life. This place offers solitude so that one can spend uninterrupted time with their loved ones. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at the rate anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team. Okay.